I'm in the White House, the entire world will know that America is strong, America is safe, and that we are going to take care of our people. We're going to take care of the men and women of our country. We're not going to worry about the rest of the world. How's it going, everybody, and welcome to the Liberty Bowl. So today, we are, of course, going to be talking about the conflict with Israel and Hamas. We're going to be giving my position on where I stand in this whole conflict, right? Um, if you didn't kind of get the, you know, from the initial, I'll just go ahead and spill it out right at the beginning. I'm completely non-interventionist, and I'll go ahead and explain my, my answer even farther, right? So, of course, everyone, you know, seen the videos over the over the weekend. You know, they're all over Twitter. They've, they've been all over, you know, Ben Shapiro played just about all of them. Um you know, the, they've been all over the internet. I'm, I'm sure you've seen at least some of them, you know, unless of course you're actively trying to avoid them, which is understandable as well, because they are quite horrific. It is probably one of the, the worst attacks that we've seen on, on civilians in quite some time, you know, at least as far back as I could, as I can remember, you know? And so, yes, this is a horrible atrocity. It's, it's something that should not have happened. It's something that should never happen anywhere in the world. Right. And it's something that is absolutely condemnable. And I do, absolutely condemn the Islamic extremists that went ahead and committed these atrocities over there in Israel, all right? So let me just go ahead and start off with, first off, I don't necessarily agree with either sides, uh, necessarily, you know, religious or philosophical or spiritual ideology, um, I guess, in the, the fact that I do kind of side with the more, uh, more uh, I guess, liberal Christian uh, uh, ideology not saying that i'm a christian or anything like that but again i do uh, agree with a lot of the morality and stuff of the uh, you know judeo-christian teachings and stuff but at the same time i'm not I ideologically or you know spiritually or you know part of a church or anything like that i'm not one of them right so same thing goes with with uh you know muzzle i'm <laughs> absolutely not islamic um if anything i'm you know uh, i i side more with with uh you know the people of Israel than uh, the Islamic people, mainly just because I don't know much about Islam. The only thing that I really know about them is that essentially within their ideology, it is okay for them to uh, murder children and women, rape women, pillage, you know, you know, human, you know, civilizations, you know, that type of stuff is absolutely 100% unacceptable anyway I, I don't care what your ideology is i don't care what your god says your god can go fucking suck a dick fucking i know that's very much against their fucking thing so yeah fucking muhammad can actually go suck a fat cock in my opinion right but either way you know all, all uh you know shit talking aside i don't necessarily agree with either side ideologically right i don't also claim to understand the history of the region right i do have a, a basic you know uh um I guess grasp on it, you know, essentially, uh, the, um, you know, there, there, it's essentially a fight over a piece of land that is both considered to be, uh, you know, by both sides to be holy land, right? It's essentially an ideological, spiritual, philosophical, uh, conflict that really does not have a solution other than one must go, right? And that's basically the, the way that it, it's got to be, you know, that's essentially the way that things work. Of course, the, Americans and the military industrial complex and the government would like to push this as long as they can. They'd like this to, to last forever. They would like to, there to be constant forever conflict uh, within the Middle East. But ultimately, with, with the uh, shifting of times, you know, the, the major schism that we're in right now, the basically reordering of the world, um, we're at a, a basically an, an influx where an inflection point where that cannot continue. And it's basically got to come down. It's, it, this has to be solved at one point or another, right? And as I said, the only way that I could really see it being solved is, well, one must go. That's that's about the way that it goes, right? So, that being said, with everything that I've seen uh, with the videos, you know, this this weekend I didn't really watch, you know, much of any of the videos. I tried to uh, actively avoid them this weekend, mainly because this weekend was my daughter's third birthday. So I didn't really want to uh, have that type of a uh, stuff uh, clouding around in my head while I was trying to uh, enjoy the weekend with my daughter, right? So uh, today, you know, this uh, Monday, I, I uh, basically got, got my first glimpse of all the, the videos and all the carnage and stuff from there. And of course, my initial reaction was absolute rage, right? I mean, that's, that's again, ideologically, spiritually, doesn't matter. Anybody that can look at that can see 
well, the, the automatic reaction is going to be rage, right? And so that being said, I mean, like I said, ideologically, spiritually, uh, any of that type of stuff, I don't agree with either of them. But as per basically rooting for somebody as to be the good guy versus the bad guy, I personally hope that Israel stomps the shit out of fucking uh, Moss. I hope they fucking completely annihilate them. I hope that they completely wipe them from the face of the planet. As per the rest of the ideologically fucking psychotic fucking uh, religion, right? It, it's all got to go, right? There is no room in this world for that type of ideology, right? So the whole idea when it comes to religion and spirituality and uh, basic outlook on the way of the on the way that the world is and the way that the universe works and the way that you know nature functions what have you whichever way you would like to look at it whichever whatever you would like to call it my general idea is live and let live if it's a spiritual ideology that helps you better yourself as a person it makes you a better person it makes you better in your community it basically helps you it gives you hope it gives you you know strength whatever then i'm all for it i would never look you know down anybody's religion if that's what it actually does for you and that's the way that you're actually that that's what you're actually making use of it with right but a ideology that basically a, a religion basically that says there can be only one essentially right if i can we we, we must uh, rid the world of the infidels right uh that cannot exist right that that cannot exist right so i did a, a video a little bit a little while back on um the virtue or the value of intolerance right so essentially the one of the main points of it is when tolerance is extended to the enemy of tolerance it leads to its own destruction so naturally the only way to be able to do this in a free society in basic you know civilization in you know civilized society basically is you need to draw limits the way that you draw limits is you have to reach the point where what can be tolerated can no longer be tolerated right such as islamic extremism right again i'm generally live and let live i don't care what you want to believe i don't care what you want to worship i don't care what gives you your inner strength or your inner peace or whatever but when your ideology infringes on other people's right to live then yeah no you, you must go right so essentially once we get to the point where we've drawn limits and we find out essentially what cannot be tolerated at all such as the raping and pillaging and murdering of villages and basically, you know, civilians that cannot be tolerated. So therefore, tolerance, the, the tolerant people must flip and basically must become intolerant. Once we have reached the bounds and limits of what we can tolerate and what we cannot tolerate, right? So therefore, again, I'm generally non-interventionist, but at the same time, this type of ideology, this type of religion, this type of spiritual belief cannot exist anymore in this world. They must be eradicated from human existence. End of story, right? That being said, again, I'm not interventionist. I do not believe that this needs to be an American undertaking. I do not believe, you know, like I said, I truly hope that Israel is able to fully stomp these people out of existence. Right. I fully hope that Israel, they they're well armed enough. Lord knows we've been fucking funding them for the last 70 years. They are more than well equipped. They are more than well trained. They are more than ready to handle this group of fucking primitive fucking, uh, I, I guess, fucking primitive fucking aboriginal fucking um, extremists. I'm, I would hope that, you know, the, the same way that we stomped them out you know, for the last fucking 20 years over in, the, you know, fucking Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan, essentially, I, I hope that with the fact that they have essentially, you know, most of the same gear that we have, you know, similar gear, at least of similar quality and, uh, you know, standards of performance, um, I would hope that they can stomp the shit out of these fucking people and send them off into oblivion, right? Send them into the history books, right? And that's just the way that I feel about it. All right. So again, the initial reaction that I have, and that I'm sure most of you are going to have when we're watching these videos, when we're seeing all of this, you know, going on, when we're seeing this play out, when we're forced to watch, you know, children, you know, crying over the loss of loved ones. And we're forced to watch, you know, uh, women with their pants stained red and 
when we have to see all this type of stuff, of course, the initial reaction is going to be rage. And that is what the initial reaction is, is meant to be. That's why these videos were sent out there, right? That's why these videos were put out there. They want a full retaliation from Israel and they basically want them to attack Gaza. The way that they're going to essentially get support is that they're trying to force the civilians to basically stay there and let the Israelis attack them. They want essentially the Israelis to retaliate in kind the same way that they did to Israel, right? Of course, Israel's not going to do that. That, that's not going to happen, right? Israel is going to remain the way that they, they have been with, with, uh, with them, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, continuing forward. I mean, they, they have declared actual war on them though. They, I mean, it's not, it's not just, you know, uh, a, a conflict. It's not just a, a, um, you know, uh, an operation, nothing like that. Uh, Israel has actually declared war out, out all out war, right? So essentially, the military is going to mobilize. They are going to invade, or you know, we'll, we'll end up seeing what happens, you know, because they are essentially surrounded by a whole bunch of uh, other Islamic states, a whole bunch of other uh, you know Arab Islamic extremist states, right? That we are funding as well, right? We're we're going to get to that in a little bit, right? But um, yeah. So essentially, the the intended purpose of all this stuff that that they themselves put out, they recorded this themselves while they were doing it and posted it for the world to see. The reason for that is, of course, it's to propagandize people and it's to elicit a feeling of rage. It's basically they, they're trying to provoke, the, you know, the same way that they did with, with 9-11. You know, they're, they're basically trying to provoke uh, a, a retaliation, right? They're trying to essentially provoke America even into retaliating. And um, essentially, I'm pretty sure we're going to end up taking the bait. You know, let, let me just put it that way. My personal position is non-intervention, right? My personal position is America first, right? However, that being said, I, I don't think that essentially, you know, Congress and the war machine and basically the uh, government fucking people that are prof that profit off of war, constant war, and essentially the, the people that are Zionists as well, you know, a large, a large uh, some of the Republican Party are, you know, Zionists. So really, it's, it's not going to, uh, to take much to get America involved, right? So I'm sure at some point America is going to have boots on the ground over there and we're going to get back to bombing little brown kids and essentially it's going to be, okay, you know, we took a couple of years off, uh, we left them our old equipment and well, let's get back to it, you know? So yeah, just just be be ready for that. It, it is going to happen no matter how much we happen to ideologically disagree with, with um, you know, intervention in foreign especially you know things that are that are spiritual and ideological and uh you know stuff that essentially has nothing to do with the united states right granted again we have been funding israel and essentially keeping them more or less protected you know they've essentially been kind of like a little brother to you, the united states for the last 70 years but we're in a like i said a changing of the world order the world is changing in a drastic way right and so basically we're, we're seeing populist movements all over the world. And it's because people are coming to their senses and realizing that we, the, the globalist people are, are essentially the cause of all of this. The globalists are basically the reason that we are never at peace. There is never peace in the world because of the fact that war is profitable and because of the fact that war keeps people afraid and keeps people dependent, right? So of course, they're going to continue to push this you know, forever. And a lot of people are starting to come to the realization that you need to get down to a nationalist level. You need to get basically the populism needs to rise up in each individual uh, nation or each individual civilization, right? And we're seeing that all over the world. The same is going for Israel and you know for the for the Islamic states, right? They need to essentially be able to stand on their own. They need to be able to fight. They need to be able to win. Otherwise, this is just going to drag out and it's just going to be an endless money machine for the elites. And it's, they're just going to continue to fucking, you know, propagandize us. They're just going to continue to, you know, send our children off to go die for their dollars, for their bank accounts. Right. So essentially, the world needs to get back to being able to stand on their own. Each individual nation needs to be sovereign. Each individual nation needs to stop relying on the United States. And moreover, the United States needs to stop trying to police the rest of the world. That's not our job. None of us signed up for that. None of us voted for that. None of us want that. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. There's actually quite a few of us that 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 want that. Not us, but you know, uh, Americans in general. I mean, there's the whole Mike Pence thing where he's basically like, oh, you know, we need to be the world police. That's us. That's America. You know? I also believe this is what happens when we have leading voices like Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Ron DeSantis signaling retreat from America's role as leader of the free world. I, look, uh, that what happened in Ukraine was an unprovoked invasion by Russia. What happened this weekend was an unprovoked invasion by Hamas uh, into Israel. Uh, and I really believe now more than ever, uh, both uh, the debate within the Republican Party and the debate within America, is whether or not we're, we're going to once again stand without apology as the leader of the free world, as the arsenal of democracy. The heartbreaking images coming out of both of these theaters of operations remind us that uh, America is the indispensable leader uh, of the free world. And if I'm president of the United States, We'll lead from American strength. Uh, he's basically uh, laying out the entire neocon agenda, you know, flat out on the table. But nonetheless, what actually needs to happen is essentially we need to get back to America first principles, non-intervention principles, right? Trade with all political entanglements with none. So let's go ahead and talk about how this happened. Let's go ahead and bring the Biden administration in here, right? So about a month ago, the Biden administration went ahead and sent over $6 billion, or not sent over, essentially unfroze, essentially the same thing, right? They sent over $6 billion to Iran and basically told Iran that this is to be used for humanitarian aid, right? Yeah, of course, trusting Iran, trusting Iran to, uh, and of course they, yep, sure thing, whatever, you know, soon, a month later. This is the results a, m a month later, right? So the whole thing is basically uh, like we put restrictions on it, right? So it has to be used for humanitarian aid, but either way you gave them the money back, whether it's being used for humanitarian aid or for terrorism is irrelevant, right? The reason for that is because essentially, if you're just going to be sending them, if you say if you, you even only sent them food, all right, well, then we don't have to worry about food. That frees up more money for us to be able to fund terrorism, right? So it doesn't matter. They're going to reallocate whatever funds they need to in order to get their agenda done because their entire worldview is based around destroying Israel, destroying the Jews, right? And as you guys know, I haven't had too many kind words for the for the Jewish people, you know, uh, throughout my shows but essentially when it comes to the church in general any sort of church I i'm against it when it comes to to large organizations or especially when it comes to people that are protected from speech and you know th that type of stuff you know, you know the, the whole thing the uh, the basically the the whole you know every anti-semitism anti -Semitism, you know you're a nazi everyone's a nazi that doesn't agree with you know a full zionist agenda right so that that is the reason why i have some some uh, choice words you know and i have some choice words for the american government too because american government essentially believes the same thing we just don't do it on a spiritual level we just do it on a fuck you we're better than you level right the other thing that that the biden administration essentially did to fund this was they left them weapons right we left them all of our fucking equipment for the most part right when biden had that botched uh withdraw from um from afghanistan right he left all of our equipment behind he basically essentially funded the taliban and then he went ahead and sent iran six billion dollars so essentially armed them and then funded them and then now he's sitting there scratching their head of, why why would this happen hmm right absolutely ridiculous and the whole reason for this old labor spotted piece of shit to be doing this is because he knows that essentially when a nation is at war it drums up support right and essentially if you get israel attacked by you know the islamist the republicans are going to get on board with war as well and so therefore biden gets his war and there you know he he gets to uh you know try and run on that like oh you know like well i'll get us out of this and blah blah blah. you know uh, yeah it's it's absolutely pathetic and it's absolutely disgusting and corrupt and it's you know Horrible, horrible shit. All right. So the other reason that Joe Biden is doing this is because it is a distraction. It is a distraction from our domestic problems. It is a distraction from the domestic corruption, the weaponization of the justice system against their political opponents. 
the fact that Joe Biden also just uh, uh, testified before special counsel today that was appointed by uh, uh, Merrick Garland. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's completely a distraction, right? Joe Biden knew that this was going to happen. And so that the, the Republicans and basically the people would be focused on something other than the corrupt administration that is persecuting their chief political rival. I'm not going to, you know, of course, blame Biden as in, you know, like he, he, you know, sent covert people in to go ahead and get shit done or whatever, you know, like nothing like that. Like, no, the reason I'm blaming Biden is because he essentially knew what was he, he knew, you know, the, the administration knew what the results were going to be. They were basically planning on this. Essentially, they, they let it happen. They let it happen. They funded it. They armed them. I mean, this really does kind of rest solely on the Biden administration. And essentially, they're going to be out here coming and trying to say, like, oh, don't worry, we're, we're going to be the ones to fix it. Don't worry, just make sure you vote blue no matter who in 2024, you guys, right? It's absolutely fucking disgusting. And of course, the war industry has had all of this planned for, for uh, uh, years now, right? For years now. Essentially, the war industry, the war machine, the Lockheed Martins, the Boeings, the Northrop, and, uh, Northrop Grunman, uh, all these people... Are major fucking donors to the, the you know political parties and stuff. They're ma major fucking donors. Basically, they're the oligarchs that run America, right? They're the American oligarchs. That's why we're constantly at war. And just recently, all NATO nations essentially upgraded their uh, infantry rifles, and you know, essentially, they upgraded all of their equipment. Curiously, around the same time that we left all of our old equipment to the Taliban, right? So here comes the whole conspiracy part of this, all right? So pay it, watch, watch, watch closely how this works here, right? So again, we left all of our old equipment, and then the war machine went ahead and, oh, don't worry, we, we got all new stuff for you, you know, brand new, brand new, state of the art, you know, brand new technology, you know, the best weapons in the world, right? You know, essentially, all these NATO nations have completely, you know, revamped their, uh, their armaments. So essentially, what better way to test out the new armaments than in actual you know physical combat with the old equipment right therefore we get to make money off of selling these nations you know the, the nato nations all this new equipment and then we actually get to test out the equipment in actual live combat against our old you know outdated equipment all right so of course seeing you know videos like this it's uh uh, uh, the type of stuff that really makes you it hits home you know it really makes you think you know this could happen to us this could happen to anybody and you should always you know be aware of that reality because that is true it could happen to anybody it, it could happen to any nation right it could happen right here in america obviously the one thing that most people are going to be worrying about is safety right the Amer safety of american people that's that's of course the number one thing on all of our minds right you know keeping our own family safe and honestly, with America having our Second Amendment, we're more or less, you know, more armed to the teeth than any other nation in the world by a long shot, right? If you count every single citizen's, you know, weapons and all that ammo that, you know, individual citizens have stockpiled, not to mention, you know, our own military, I mean, we're, we're more armed than any other nation in the world 10 times over, right? So essentially, we don't really have much fear of invasion, but at the same time, we should never be complacent because of the fact that this could happen anywhere. This could happen to us. I mean, it has happened to us. We have been attacked here on American soil before. I mean, there's Pearl Harbor, there's 9-11. I mean, uh, we've, we've been attacked here before. Don't ever think that it can't happen to us. Don't ever think that we're completely safe. The fact that we do happen to have a Second Amendment, though, it does generally kind of deter other people from trying to actually paratroop, you know, parachute into America because of the fact that you start parachuting into America, we're going to have people out there with rifles just picking you off. You know, it doesn't matter where you land in America. We're completely armed to the teeth everywhere. So, I mean, there, there's that. But again, you should never actually feel completely safe. And you should, complete, you should always understand that your safety 
is solely your responsibility. You should not rely on government. You should not rely on the military. You should not rely on anybody but yourself. You shouldn't rely on the fact that, oh, my neighbor's got a gun. We're going to be all right. You need to arm yourself. You need to arm your family. You need to teach your family how to, you know, you need to teach yourself, of course, too, how to, how to be, how to properly use a firearm and how to be effective with it as well. You need to stock up. Not, I mean, firearms, you don't need to have an entire wall of guns, right? You just need several that work. You need a couple different calibers. You need something for hunting. You need something, you know, uh, a rifle. You need uh, something for uh, home defense. You need like a shotgun. You need about a, a, a pistol. You know, take your pick on caliber, nine millimeter, 45, whatever, right? But the important thing is you need to stockpile ammo. That's what you need to stockpile. I mean, you could have 20 different guns, but if you only have a box of 50 rounds, what good is it, right? I mean, but then again, if you have two rifles and you have, you know, two, 3,000 rounds, well, then you're probably going to be all right. You're probably not going to run through those rounds in that rifle. You know, if you have, you know, a couple pistols and you have, you know, a couple thousand rounds, you're probably going to be all right. At the same time, you never know. I mean, you, you never know. You could, you know, take one shot and the next thing you know, you're dead. And, then, you know, what was all that, that stockpiling and saving for? But the purpose is to basically not not lay down and expect somebody to save you the purpose is basically you die fighting or you live in servitude and that's really not what we do here in america that's that's really really not what we do here in america so don't ever feel like we are completely safe just because we live in america right let's also keep in mind that these people are here right now in america I mean, there, there's, you know, been uh, celebrations all over New York, Seattle, all over the damn country, people celebrating this, right? We have Muslim communities all over America. We have Islamic, you know, uh, organizations and communities all over America, right? These people are here already, not to mention the fact that we have a wide open border. So, I mean, not even just, you know, trying to condemn, you know, people that have been here forever. We have people just pouring in. We have millions of people pouring into America right now. We have no idea who they are. We have no idea where they came from. I know they didn't come from Mexico, right? These people are here. These people are already here. They don't need to parachute. They don't need to parachute in. They're already here. And not to mention, we also have them within our government. The, the whole squad members, you know, the AOCs, the Elon Omars, all these people need to be expelled from government. All these people need to be expelled from the country. Just being real, just being honest. All these people need to be expelled from this country. Essentially, as I mentioned earlier, the world is changing. The, wor the world order is changing. Basically, if you're not 100% with America, you need to leave. If you are not 100% for the protection, the maintaining of our ways, the maintaining of our lifestyle, the maintaining of our nation, the maintaining of freedom, you need to leave. You need to get out. We do not want you here and you are not welcome here. These people like AOC, these people like you know, Rashida Tlaib, these, these, uh, you know, these Elon Omars, they need to be expelled. End of story. All right? Anybody that would cheer this type of stuff on is pure evil. Again, when tolerance is extended to the enemy of tolerance, then you have laid down the path for your own destruction. We cannot tolerate these people. And I know, those are harsh words. Those are the types of words that, those are the types of ideas that have far-reaching implications. And again, once you've drawn limits and you have found what cannot be tolerated, well, then tolerance must be flipped on its head in order to preserve tolerance. <laughs> so... Again, I will just reiterate my position when it comes to intervention in Israel. I do not think that we should intervene in Israel. We have done plenty for them already. 
if they are incapable of standing on their own, if they are incapable of maintaining their own sovereignty, much in the same way with Ukraine. I mean, there were, it's a completely you know, different situation. It's the same essential situation when it comes to uh, foreign intervention. The, the, the problem with foreign intervention, especially when it comes to America, is we don't fix anything. We make things worse. That's all that we do. It's all that we do. We just exacerbate problems and then we go in there and we make fucking money. We, we make fucking money for the military machine and then the military machine then goes and, you know, turns it back to uh, donors and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle and it's all just about money and it's all just about greed and it's all about power, right? So essentially, we have our own major domestic issues here. We don't have time to be the world police. We don't have the resources to be the world police. And we do not have the down-home domestic support anymore to be the world police. We have our own problems to fix here in America. We cannot be sending all of our money abroad. We cannot be sending you know, our, our work abroad. We cannot be sending anything abroad. We need to be 100% focused on maintaining American values. We need to be 100% focused on rebuilding our nation. We need to be 100% focused on making America great again. We cannot help others when our own nation is in shambles, when our own nation is divided, when our own nation is crumbling, when our economy is crumbling. We do not have time, energy, resources to be helping the rest of the world. And I know that it's harsh, and I know that it's rough, but essentially, this is a new world order. This is essentially the world reorganizing itself. Right? And so essentially we need to take care of our own people. We cannot, we cannot continue down the same way that we've been going. It has only made things worse. It has only made us hated. I mean, yeah, it's got us power. It's got us, you know, the world power. It's basically, you know, America has run the world for, you know, since World War II, we've been an empire. But we can't do that anymore. Until we have made our own beds, we cannot be out there bitching about other people's houses and how they choose to keep it in order or how disorganized it is, right? So, again, I don't agree with either side, spiritually, philosophically. I guess maybe philosophically, but not necessarily spiritually, right? So I'll just kind of touch on my somewhat spiritual beliefs, right? I'll just leave it with what I generally believe the meaning of life to be. So in a general sense, in the basic sense, the meaning of life is survival. However, human beings have grown past the basic sense of life. We have grown beyond the general idea of life, and we are now intelligent life. So therefore, the meaning of intelligent life is for assurance that life will survive. Right? So the meaning of intelligent life is to ensure that life survives. Essentially, the universe has coalesced in this perfect soup in order to make this planet that eventually sprung single-celled life, that eventually sprung, you know, that did its best in that essentially single-celled life that its meaning was to survive. That was its only purpose. That's, as we look in nature, that is the rest of nature's only purpose. Down to bugs, down to plants even. Plants are even fighting for survival when they compete with, you know, uh, at the, the canopy top for the sunlight. Everything, all life in this world is fighting for survival because that is the basic meaning of life. Once life got to the point where it was able to create intelligent life, well, intelligent life took on a new meaning. And the meaning of intelligent life now is to basically ensure the survival of life. So I know that it could be you know, construed in a way to basically say like, oh, well, then we should be fighting for, you know, for, for uh, their life. Because essentially, the, if the, you know, Islamic extremists uh, believe that, you know, their life is the only life that should exist, well, then we need to basically get rid of them so that, you know, because they're, 
their uh, philosophy is that well, all life must end except for us, right? So, I mean, it could be translated into that way, but essentially, we are basically devolving. We we have a our civilization has collapsed. It's collapsing at least. It's you know it's crumbling, and so essentially, we need to focus back on survival. We are bas basically intelligent life. However, we are basically up against the ropes right now. We are up against the ropes, and basically we are needing to revert back to the basic meaning of life, which is survival. Competition. Survival of the fittest. And as long as America remains the fittest, as long as America has the most gusto, the most spirit, as long as America remains true to our values, we will be the ones that survive we will be the ones that get to continue to live and the ones that get to continue to ensure that life survives all right i appreciate you guys stopping by listening to that whole whole long spiel that i had there uh again you know uh, it's it's rough you know you never want to see any of this type of stuff anywhere in the world fact of the matter is we're going to see a lot more. This is just the beginning. This is going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot worse. And so essentially, our neighbor's houses are on fire. Our friend's houses are on fire. Our house is on fire. We cannot be trying to focus on saving our, our neighbor's cat. We cannot be trying to focus on pissing out the fires of all of our friends and neighbors. Our house is burning down as well. We need to revert to our basic meanings of life, and that is survival. All right, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video out if it resonated with you at all. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Yeah, man, I'm, I'd be more than happy to have discussions with you guys. Uh, let, let me know uh, what your guys' opinion is, what you think America's position should be here. And um, yeah, appreciate all of you. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, fuck off.